friends. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of Career Conversations. I'm your host, Unika Walcott. And today's guest is Claire Breen. She is a strategic account executive in the media industry. And I'm really excited to learn more about her journey and share it with you all. So if you'd welcome Claire to the ep- uh, <laughs> so if you'd welcome Claire to the show, I said the episode, geez. <laughs> hey, how are you? I am doing really well. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today. Thank you for saying yes to my invitation. Absolutely. I'd say yes to most things from you. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm like, I'm on a special list then. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So my first question is, what does your family think you do when you tell them that you're a strategic account executive in the media industry? That's a really great question um, because it took a really long time for them to get it right. Um, I think for a really long time, they thought that I just basically did radio sales and and went and pounded the pavement and knocked on doors and said, hey, I've got a a radio special for you. um, And do you want to have your commercials on the radio? Um, And, you know, that's a very small part of what I did when I very first started, um, but it's um, it's not all inclusive what, of what I do now. Um, and so, you know, I think that that's a big part of what they thought that I did. But they've they've learned a lot about what it is that I do, um, and and I think that with them also being in the marketing and media space, um, that it's easier for them to understand. Well, that's good. So they thought you kind of went door to door and said, hey, you want to be on the radio? I'll put your commercial on. So can you tell me a little bit more about what you actually do? Like walk me through the day in a life. Yeah. So um, it's a lot of um, prospecting, of course, and really looking into who's advertising where. Um, And then sitting down and having conversations um, a lot of the time historically some of the going door to door or calling uh, business to business and having those conversations about, you know, what does your marketing look like? What does your advertising look like? Can we talk about uh, what those strategies are and how we can um, support you through a holistic marketing strategy with different types of media. Um, And and now it's kind of evolved um, as the times have evolved over the last, you know, seven years or so um, with more of the phone conversations and social media prospecting in addition to um, having a lot more conversations via Zoom and video calls. So has the shift to like using Zoom and video calls made your job easier or more difficult? Um, I would say it's made my job easier, but I know that not everybody feels the same way about that. I I enjoy video calls a lot more than I enjoy the the door to door or going out and meeting in person. I can imagine it saves a lot of time and gas, which is really expensive right now. <laughs> a significant amount of time and a significant amount of gas, and I have four dogs at home. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, wow is. Right. Um, and I, I like to be able to just spend my time, you know, at, at the house. And I, I find that I can get a lot more of the um, behind the scenes work done for my clients in a more efficient way. Be able to look at, at the data and analytics behind the campaigns and the strategies behind the campaigns that I am having these conversations about so that we get better results. Um, whereas, you know, when I was going out and having these conversations in person, it was more difficult to really have that finger on the pulse of what was actually going on with the campaigns because you would spend, you know, at least two, three, sometimes even four hours of your day on the road going from client to client, meeting to meeting, um, and then coming back to the office and imagine like parking downtown, walking into the building, all of those things, they take up a significant amount of time. So the amount of time actually spent in diving into the data attribution analytics of the campaign to make sure that the performance is there, um, there just wasn't a lot of time for that. So that's what I like about it. When you say campaign, what do you mean for people who aren't in the industry? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, so um, for what I do on a day-to-day basis, 
really building out omni-channel marketing media strategies, um, everything from digital advertising to podcast and radio um, and OTT advertising. So really um, holistic campaign strategies. That okay. um, OTT, you lost me. OTT is over the top television. Um, okay. So like connected TV. So if you think of like Peacock or Tubi, um, not your traditional cable providers. Okay. And we're watching through like a, a um, like an app. Yeah. Or through an app. Yes. Um, that is OTT. Okay. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a lot of different channels you can offer people. So it's, it's digital strategy. It's TV, it's radio. It, it's not just, you know, here's a newspaper ad like back in the day, like there's so many avenues you get to create and you kind of package these together for each client so that like it fits what they're doing. Yeah, that's correct. So based on what the um, overall goals of the client are or the, their KPIs are, their key performance indicators for their marketing strategy is, we can create strategy that, that checks those boxes, right? So okay. if their goal is um, web lift, they want to drive people to their website, there's a strategy that we can deploy for that. If their goal is to drive low cost of um, customer acquisition, there's a strategy that we can we can build for that. Um, if they want to get more phone calls, we can build a strategy for that. Um, so there's really not a lot that um, we we don't do as far as um, having the channels necessary in order to build out the the strategy in order to um, meet the, the our clients' different um, campaign goals. That's really cool. So like if I wanted to have more people come to Career Conversations website, I could call you and we could create a plan and set out like a whole campaign for it about like, okay, this is what's going to happen week one, week two, and, and go from there and like track it and modify it like so that it that it gets the results. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. No, that, that, that helps me kind of understand a little bit more. It sounds like a really compl complicated job. What is your favorite part about the job? That's a very loaded question because there are a lot of parts and pieces to it um, because it's not just the initial conversation or the initial touch point with the client, right? Um, it is the full sales cycle, if you will, because it, it is still a sales role while yeah. the strategy of the, um, okay, I just answered my own question. The stra building out the strategy is is probably my favorite part, and then implementation of the strategy, uh, going to market with it, and then being able to um, prove out the results. I think is is my favorite, and then from there, growing that strategy um, and and getting. Um, more and more layers to achieve more KPIs for our clients is, is probably my favorite part. That makes sense. So it kind of like takes me back to like when I studied PR, we talk about like different phases, like phase one being like awareness. Like we yes. just want people to know it, that we exist. And so there's a strategy for that. But there's a different strategy when I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Yes, absolutely. So like if you look at marketing like a funnel, right? That's mm -hmm. like a, that's a terrible funnel. But what am I even? What is? <laughs> what, what are you marketing like a funnel, right? Like it's yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, um, well, um, <laughs> but it's a funnel, right? So mm -hmm. like there are different phases to the funnel, the marketing funnel, the sales funnel. Um, so you you can deploy um, any one of the different tactics or strategies to achieve and story tell for your brand to get to from point A to point B. Okay. Um, so you really like the strategy and implementation pieces. There's something you've done that you've been particularly proud of, like that you like maybe didn't expect to happen in your career. My whole career, I guess. Um, I, I, <laughs> I have my whole career. Okay. <laughs> I can elaborate on that. My whole I, totally nonlinear path. I, I like really didn't know what to expect from myself um, in a professional capacity um, because I had always been a little bit rebellious, didn't really um, see myself taking a 
um, I guess, professional course. Um, and so the fact that I kind of landed in um, marketing and strategic partnerships and advertising sales and um it kind of took me by surprise at first. Um, <laughs> and it just has kind of, my whole career. It, it, I mean, genuinely it really did. Um, but I, my first ever job was selling furniture. And what I loved most about that was just the interactions with people and, and having them come in and tell me what, and I worked for Pier one imports, which is so funny and random for a 14 year old, to work at Pier One Imports. Um, <laughs> I, I loved it when people would come in and tell me, you know, what they had in their space and what it was that they were trying to achieve. And then I would come, I would go around the store with them and we would talk about the different furniture pieces that they could put in there. Um, and so I, I always loved this opportunity to work with people and to create a strategy that worked for them and what their needs were. Um, so I guess looking back on, you know, my history, it makes sense that that's where we ended up. Um, but I guess I was just a little bit surprised, you know, cause I played in, I played in punk bands. Um, I, you know, did, I did just about everything except for what you would expect someone to do that, you know, took a traditional career path. Um, but this is where I've ended up and it's something that I absolutely love and really enjoy doing. Um, and I'm really passionate about it. I, I absolutely love, um, what I do day in and day out. That's exciting. So you went from punk band and furniture sales going, do you want traditional or mid-century modern <laughs> to, yeah. to helping people grow their businesses? That's, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's really, really great. So what is something you wish you knew before starting this career journey? That's a, that's a really big question. Um, what is something that I wish I knew? Hmm. I wish that I knew that it was okay to ask for help and support um, from leadership along the way. Um, I, I think that I could have raised my hand sooner. Um, I wish that I knew that it was um, acceptable to network more um, a little bit earlier in my career. Um, I wish I had leveraged LinkedIn sooner. Um, I think that that's a, a really huge thing that I, I wish that I, I would have known before starting on this career path. And I think it would have been really, really helpful for me earlier. Um, so I, I guess, you know, raising my hand utilizing more networking um, are, are kind of two big things that I, I really wish I would have utilized and knew more um, at, at the onset of my career. That makes sense. So speaking of like raising your hand more, like have you been able to find mentors or mentor other people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I've been really fortunate um, in my role with iHeart. Um, and raised my hand here and after about two years, raised my hand here with um, a woman who um, heads up our multi-market partnerships division and told her that I wanted to sit in her seat someday and that I wanted help doing it. And she set me up with an incredible, incredible mentor who's helped me um, in my success at iHeartMedia. And, you know, forever grateful for her. But, you know, if if there's one thing I could say, it's that never be afraid to go way above your head to ask for help, um, because the, the people that are on your executive leadership team or your C-suite team or um, even just your manager's manager, they want for you to succeed. Your success is their success. Um, so literally. <laughs> liter like literally. So don't be afraid to ask ask for that help and support. You know, it's it's great to um, work really hard and hope that people see that you're working really hard, but there's just something else that's so powerful about raising your hand and asking for that support. 
Raise your hand, find your mentors. When you aren't working your butt off, putting together these incredible strategic campaigns, what are you doing for fun? Um, I absolutely love antiquing. Um, like I said, I have four dogs, so I'm hanging out with my dogs a lot. Um, antiquing, I love historic homes. So I'm kind of like an old lady trapped in a 30 year old's body. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an old lady. Look, I, I get teased. I vacillate between, wow, that's really crazy. And hey, old lady Walcott, I get it. I'm, I'm glad that we're kindred spirits in that way. Um, I collect house plants. I love playing in my garden. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty low key. Uh, really, really a homebody. I just love to, I also love collecting art, love collecting art. And, um, you know, especially if it's, a, if it's an antique, um, <laughs> But that's that's mostly what I'm doing in my in my downtime and my my fun time and hanging out with my husband. My husband's great. Um, I've gotten him really into antiquing, which is those are words I never thought I would say. Oh wow! Look, yeah. you gotta teach me the secret on that. My husband's like, "What are we doing? Where, where are we going? Shopping of any kind? It's not really interesting." Oh um, well, I just kept taking him with me. <laughs> that's the trick. Just just desensitize him to it, and then eventually yeah. he enjoys it. Yeah. And then I kept pointing things out and saying, isn't that so great? You think that's awesome, don't you? Um, and just that's how that's how we we got it. Oh, that's cool. So do you have like a favorite PC found so far while out antiquing? Um, the desk that I sit at currently is one of my favorite pieces. Um and unfortunately, you can't see it, but it, yeah, you got to send me a picture. We'll add it as like a bonus. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll absolutely send a picture. It is a um, 1920s screen printing desk hmm. um, and it is just phenomenal. I love it. Also like OG media. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that super lines up with like your passions here. Yes, so can kind of like create the future and, and, and be able to literally put your hands on the past. Yeah, that, I love that. That's a great way of putting it. That, that's exciting. Um, we talked about your love of antiquing. We talked about how you were bold and ambitious and you raise your hand and we'll call your boss's boss and go, look, I, I need help. Can you help me grow? I want to level up here. That's that's awesome. I don't know that that many people are that bold. No, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, I am definitely one of those people that's been accused in the past of being pushy. Like, I remember my college professor, like, I handed him my resume, and he he called me pushy, actually. And I was like, he he didn't mean it in a negative way, or maybe he did. Okay, like, like, yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I, I've kind of, like, always been a little bit too dumb to realize when people are insulting me sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, you you were, you were trying to be mean to me. I didn't understand that. Like, you got to really come out of the bag for me to notice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, otherwise, no. Like, a lot of, I was like, he, like I said, he could have meant something by it. But I, I don't find a, ambition to be a bad thing. I think the best thing is, like, really learning the balance, though, and figuring out how to take care of yourself while aiming for your ambition so you don't end Absolutely. up burning out. I think that that's a, the biggest like thing I've learned over the years. It's like, yeah, you can have all this ambition in the world. And then when you're like, you know, 50, like get on a respirator because you did too much. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's, it's really striking that balance between ambition and taking care of your mental health. Um, yeah. Which is why I asked you, like, what do you do for fun? Like, what are your diversions? Like everybody needs something where you just like are checked out and it's not, you know, let me chase the money or chase the fame or whatever it is people are after that makes them feel good. Um, talked about a few things. Can I talk more about your dogs? Like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I can talk to you about my dogs. I can okay. talk to you about my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Why four dogs? Like you fell in love with each one or like, did you get them all at the same time? No, actually. Um, you know, I've collected, collected. <laughs> um, collect things. dogs, collect antiques. Yeah. 
They've kind of just come into my life over time. Um, my husband and I don't have plans to have kids. Um, again, like go, kind of going back to like the ambitions thing, I'm very career oriented and, you know, kids are absolutely wonderful and I absolutely adore my friends, children, but they're just not um, something that I have time in my plans for. Um, and so I've always loved dogs and I find that they are, it's much easier to balance career ambitions and dogs um, than I think it would be to manage career ambitions and children. Um, and so I got my first dog in my early 20s. Um, and he unfortunately passed away about a year and a half after I got him. Oh, no. Um it was really sad. He was a rescue. Um, I had gotten him around, he was around six years old. Um, and so got another dog in his place, um, who was a former race dog, um, a lurcher. Um, and his name is Benson. He's still with me. I've actually had him for six years this month. Um, and happy then birthday. what's that? But happy birthday, Benson. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then got my husband loves corgis. He's obsessed with them. Um, <laughs> we ended up getting a corgi when we moved into um, our house about five years ago. Um, and then got a, a little senior palm tree. About a year after that, I have, I also have an affinity for adopting senior dogs, although I do think that she will be my last senior dog adoption. They are um, a lot, a lot of work. And then uh, I guess it's been about nine, nine days um, since we got our most recent addition. So this is the most dogs we've ever had. We've only ever had three um, and just got our fourth. She is a Borzoi. Um, or a Russian wolfhound, um, and she is 11 weeks old, and her name is Louise. Yes, she's very cute. Um, she doesn't sleep through the night. Um, kind of like, yeah, she's so young. She's little. Yeah, she's little. Um, I mean, she's gigantic, but she's a baby. Yeah, um, she's yeah but yeah, that's those are my dogs, and they are... Um, the equivalent for me to my children. And I absolutely oh, dog mom. I'm a dog mom. Sweet. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So those are my dogs. So I like mean, if you're on meetings with me, you can frequently hear. Well, not, I guess not frequently. Everybody. I, like, I can't think of a time I've talked to you and actually heard your dogs. Really? <laughs> no, I can't. We've, we've talked quite a few times. I, yeah, I, yes, we have. Um, and you know what? I guess I have to start believing people when they say that they've never heard my dogs. Um, they're barking right now. You can't hear them? No, I'm like, she's making it up. There's not four dogs here. <laughs> All right, cool. So you can't, you probably will never be able to hear my dogs because they are barking and you can't hear them now. So yeah. Well, Sounds like you've got great insulation and soundproofing. <laughs> right now, in this uh, 1940s house, we must. Oh, they don't make them like they used to. No, they don't. They don't. So, you've got your fur babies. You've got your antiques, your sweet husband, and a bright future ahead. 20 years from now, what is Claire doing? That is a really fun question to ask um, because I do have a lot of ideas and ambition. Um, I would love to end up in um, some sort of strategic, um, some sort of strategic business development role. Um, working with people, mentoring teams, um, and working in leadership. Um, I, I would love to be working, uh, for a company or perhaps my own company, 
that um, is very, very uh, people oriented, people first. Um, I think we're hearing a lot of that mentality in the business world. Um, in so. we do. That's what people want a lot of. Um, and so that's, you know, the direction that I'd like to go. I'd really like to, um, I'd really like to be heading up um, a space like that and, and creating strategies to help develop people so that they can have the careers of their dreams within a company that I am working for um, and really help them to um, get clear on the um, the deliverables that are meaningful within a um, within an organization. So I know that's very very broad. Um, We're also talking very very far, like twenty years. Like right, I mean, right. Like it seems almost absurd that I would ask you that when we've like experienced the last two years, and none of us could probably pl plan fast like two weeks for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And it feels like even now it's difficult to know how to plan, right? Um, mm -hmm. It feels like there's every day, it feels like there's a situation that um, is exhausting, um, especially as a woman, as a person of color, right? It feels like there's just constantly turmoil. And it's, yeah. it's very difficult to know how to navigate it. Um, and so I think that, you know, continuing to try to look towards the future, keeping that um, people centricity at the forefront of how we operate and how we do business um, is, is key and monumental to being successful. Um, and I think the businesses that do so are going to be the ones that are continuously successful. Um, because at the end of the day, people are the ultimate success of your business. Um, so when you, when you treat your people well, and when you, when you pull out all the stops to do so, that is, um, that's how you succeed. Um, and it's not just talking the talk, it's walking the walk and making sure that there's the systems in place to do so. Um, and so I think that, you know, looking 20 years out, really understanding the uh, metrics and, and measures of how we do that and how we make that work and, and creating strategies that support that while also supporting um businesses that are profitable and can turn really strong ROI and 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 serve meaningful purposes um, I think is going to be um, of the utmost importance. I feel like the next generation Gen Z is really pushing for things to to be more integrated so that it's not okay like this is business and like screw the environment this is business and forget your family like those things have to do this. <laughs> it, I think that's becoming much more of a, an expectation than, than a, a negotiable for a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, I recently participated in a program, and I kind of think this speaks to what you're saying um, about kind of the idea of what does 20 years from now look like. Um, one of the teaching events I attended, one of the speakers invited us to engage in an exercise that really helped us to, to grasp the idea of revolutionary imagination. And, and I loved it because it was kind of like, okay, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Now, imagine walking down the street in your neighborhood and everything is as it should be. You know, people have got their access to the food that they need. They've got, you know, access to the education. They need. What does this place look like? And, and I think that that's such a powerful tool in the face of the constant exhaustion that you face to, to have the audacity to imagine. Even. Yeah. A, a world that is the kind of world we all want to live in. Um, my mother-in-law sent me a really sweet card. I just got it today and it's like, you know, you know, if the, I think I might have it next to me. I just thought it was so Are cute. you making me cry with it? You already like just made me tear up with me. I mean, I, look, I'm blessed to have a great mother-in-law and I don't have it close enough. Like, so I'm not going to actually, heck, I'm just getting up then I'll cut it. Hold on. <sighs> or maybe I won't. People just get to see me live my wonky life. 
it's way more fun that way. It's real TV. I um, I love to just keep it real. Yeah, me too. So I'm up. And so this is the card that she gave me. Oh, yeah, let me move it in. I love a world with women like you running it. And it just absolutely made my day. I was like, this is the sweetest thing. That like, is so sweet. I was like, but that's what she sent me. I was like, I wasn't expecting anything in the mail. Like, you know, we chat, happy Mother's Day, how you doing? But this was just like the nicest thing to grab out of the car, out of the um, the mailbox and then the little back of the envelope, the little corner, I guess their little thing that says hella inspired. I just thought it was oh. the cutest thing. Um, but it, it's one of those things I, I plan to hold on to because I think it'll it'll help me to like really remember like what I'm out to accomplish. Like career conversations isn't just here for me to be like, oh, you know, let me let me hijack people's network on the internet, which is what I feel like some people are. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like that's some some of the motive for some people, like and doing sure. some of this stuff. And that's not a bad thing. Like everything has a means to an end. Like we all gotta eat. Like there's right. no shame in that. But for me, I really want to be able to help people make the connections they need to get to the next step. So like Claire, you, you've had this amazing career. You've got these excellent mentors, the things that you've learned, you're not able to share with other people and also have access to different mentors yourself. That's what I'm hoping to create with Career Conversations is like community. Absolutely. Um, and I think you're doing an absolutely incredible job with it. And it's amazing and it's an it's such an honor to know you and to talk with you and to call you a friend and i also kind of consider you a mentor too oh that was weird i didn't see that coming oh <laughs> well thanks <laughs> you thanks. Have to make it weird but i'm teasing like i i am very much personality wise like probably everybody and their mom is like big sister <laughs> you're just that, you're just wonderful like that's like my favorite job in the world is like like people are like what do you like most like if i had like i, I put up a poster that said you know my number one point favorite you know 1.5 favorite thing you know as a, as a professional is like having interns it's like but it's like a human i'm probably gonna say being like a big sister is probably still my favorite thing even though like i'm a whole wife and all those other things it's like i still just like being like a big sister like it's it's my favorite thing yeah <laughs> yeah, I get that. So, yeah. Um, is there anything that I have not asked that you would like to share? I don't think so. Well, that means we had a good conversation then. <laughs> you know, I always leave our conversations feeling like we had a good conversation. Oh, that's good. I'm I'm happy to hear that. Like that that makes me makes me smile on the inside. <laughs> good. I'm glad. All right. Well, wonderful people. If you'd like to get a hold of Claire, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. I am I'm pretty easy to to chat with on there. Um, and my email, I would tell you to reach out to me via email, but my email is kind of confusing. Okay. Um, so reach out to me via LinkedIn um, and I'll uh, likely get back to you. Okay, perfect. So if you'd like to get in touch with Claire, you can find her on LinkedIn. Her name's right there in the bottom corner. C-L-A-I-R-E. It's her first name. I'm spelling it because also this will be an audio format for some people. And they'll oh, be like, what is she talking about? <laughs> and her last name is Breen. B-R-E-E-N. Like the color, but B like boy R-E-E-N. So Breen instead of green. Got it. Yes. That is cool. a I'm in mistake. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Happens well, over. All right. So, friends, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Career Conversation. Thank you, Claire, for being on the show. I really have enjoyed my conversation with you, and I look forward to us catching up soon. All right. Until next time, love y'all. <laughs>